Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. The only good thing about this port is the inn of Abu Jamil the Squint, who for six months I have been dreaming of his roasted sheep's eyes. <laughs> this is episode 186, recorded March 29th, 2023. So Gruesome Magazine. Roasted sheep eyes. That you just can't get a good of, roasted sheep eyes no, these days. I never have. It. Or a chilled a monkey brain. They took a, mm. yeah, well, those you can still Are get. Are those anything like more. Rocky Mountain oysters? Is that kind no, of. No, no. <laughs> this, this, this They're from the other area. end. Yeah. No. All right. I'm your host, Doc Rotten, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host, Jeff Moore, and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week, of course, are the Gru Crew, starting off with my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? May Allah be with you. And also with you. Uh, tonight... I'm just going to say it right now. We're doing Sinbad and Eye of the Tiger because my next guest, of course, is a huge fan of Harrowhausen, Ray, Sir Ray Harrowhausen. Would you, we'll, we'll go ahead and knight him right here if he's not. Yeah. Um, Bill Mulligan. Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? Yeah. yeah and, and I said to myself, what is a movie that I know Doc is going to love? Because he Absolutely needs love. a little more love. I, I need some love. Right. Pick this one. Pick, pick this. Sinbad. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a mistake. Would never make a mistake, sir. Never. Bastard. Also joining us is <laughs> Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic air. How you doing, Chad? I'm a little, I'm a little tired. I spent most of the, the day today looking for a size 12 for my big giant pelican foot. <laughs> pelican. You got a pelican <laughs> foot? Or whatever it is. And, uh... I love it. I so... love it. Is that a kiss shirt you got on? Yeah, man. Is that Destroyer? Or, no, that's, that's Destroyer. the Rock and Roll Over rock, album. Rock and that's Roll. right. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Well, Destroyer is where they're all... Never mind. Doesn't yeah. matter. We're not doing... Yes, Kiss it here. does matter. It does we're matter. Doing, Kiss is what, 70s. One day we're going to do uh, Kiss, Kiss Meets the, the Phantom. Phantom. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we are. Oh, mm -hmm. my. We have to. But tonight, we are doing Sinbad and Eye of the Tiger, 1977. Are you guys ready to jump into this? Mm-hmm. Yes. Madness, this madness, Sinbad, and the Eye of the Tiger, nineteen seventy-seven. You shall not pass. You should. <laughs> I could not stop thinking that every time. All right, but directed by Sam Awanamaker, uh, written by Beverly Cross and Ray Harryhausen, uh, who did the story. The cast includes Patrick Wayne, Jane Seymour, Patrick Troughton, or Troughton. I don't know. Either way, Taryn Power, Margaret Whiting, Kurt Christian, and Nadim Sawala. Production company was Columbia Pictures, Charles H. Sneer. I'm going to call him Sneer. <laughs> Productions and Andor Films. And they were uncredited. Hey. Film and locations of Shepperton, Lee International, Pinewood Studios, England, Spain, Jordan, and Malta. Filming dates started uh, June 16, 1975. It was released May 28, 1977, US. My birthday. Uh, yeah. Well, happy birthday. Budget was three and a half mil, and it made sixteen and seven eight six. Hey, that was weird. Made but hey, profit. here's the synopsis, guys. Send bad to sailor, sails. <laughs> Done the always to deliver the cursed prince to a dangerous island to face a deadly opposition from a powerful witch. Pretty much the same plot as the Golden Voyages, in bad. Mm -hmm. it... Without the golden. <sighs> Both, yeah. mm. All I've right, seen that movie before. I don't you remember. We did. <laughs> All right, no. ah, you, yeah. There's a story. Can't I've seen it a know. couple times. All right. Uh, well, what we want to do tonight is we want to find out when we first watched this and what our first impressions were, and did they hold up today? If you happen to have watched it uh, in the past, and we're going to start off with the man who selected this beast of a film, the one and only. <laughs> Bill Mulligan, sir, when did you first watch this and uh, what was your first impression? I saw it when it came out. Uh, by this point, I was a confirmed Harryhausen fanatic. And so, you know, the chance to see an actual movie on the big screen, the, the only ones of his that I'd seen in the theaters was Golden Voyage and now, and now this one. So I ran out to see it and 
this is one of those movies when I go back and watch it again, I keep hoping I'm going to like it more than I did the first time because I, I do not hate this film. That will be coming up pretty soon, but I think it's by far, without even a contest, the least of the Sinbad movies and has to be in the bottom tier of Harryhausen movies, including a few of the old ones that are pretty, you know, I mean, they're, they're of their time. It just doesn't completely work. It, it's obviously rushed for a movie that took that long to make because, you know, it was all Harryhausen in his basement making the special effects. And I, I think the special, the animation's fine. But in every other aspect, this movie needed to be tightened up. It's too long. You could cut out 20 minutes without touching any animation. And uh, it needed to have more care with some of the regular special effects the animation is fine but but when they're standing in front of a blue screen i can see the blue screen behind them there's a big rim of blue around them a lot of the process work is just subpar it needed uh, another polish of the script it just it and it needed a director who actually wanted to make this movie sam wanamaker did not want to make this movie he has said that he openly you know admitted this was he was he was a, a, an actor his big passion was Shakespeare. The Shakespeare company in Britain was going under and he single-handedly brought it back. He, he did a great thing. He needed some money. He agreed to direct this movie and he didn't do a great job. So we're kind of left with a, with an odd film that has the elements that I love in a, in a Ray Harryhausen movie. And I, I still think it holds up. I, I still kind of revert to being a kid when I watch these things, these episodic special effects films and everything. But definitely not a patch on the ash, ass of Golden Voyage or Seventh Voyage or Jason and the Argonauts. It's a little derivative. It feels like it feels like they knew they were running out of time, that this kind of movie just wasn't going to be made anymore. And it came out just a few months after Star Wars, which effectively was ugh, the death knell mm, I of didn't think about that. this mm. kind of film. Um, so Harry, I think Harryhausen looked at how things went and just said, we'll go to the well one more time. We'll throw everything, but the kitchen sink will do uh, clash of the Titans and go out strong. And he did. And I think, I think that the way this film came out kind of showed him there wasn't really a future for this, for this sort of thing. So, yeah. Mm. But I still like it better than some people. You do like it better than some people. Yeah. Chad Hunter, when did you first see uh, I, the tiger here? And what was your first impression? And does it hold up today? Um, my first time seeing it was on TV as a kid. But um, apparently I have I have a problem figuring out the titles because they all kind of run together <laughs> for me. Uh, the infamous classic era one where i just watched the an entirely wrong movie <laughs> for the podcast <laughs> but um but this one is not i remember it not being my favorite mainly because uh i knew patrick wayne was the son of john wayne and uh, because my dad being a big john wayne fan and everything so it, it didn't really ring true to me, I guess. I couldn't buy his, first of all, he didn't even, his voice was like, hey, everybody, let's go to the boat and go <laughs> sailing for it. He, he, he didn't even try, you know, he didn't even try. Um, so I was like, man, what happened to his, what happened to his accent? But um, I was baffled by the creature work. I, uh, like Bill said, it was great animation. But the choice of the creatures was odd to me. A, a giant walrus, uh, you know, st stuff like that. You, you know, it's, I'd be scared of a normal uh, walrus, you know. Yeah. You know. But anyway, um, it's it's not one of my it's not one of my favorites. It's like Bill said too. I found it too long. Um, it could have been an hour and a half easy, and would have been just like a train chugging along the tracks there um but i did like jane seymour um mm. yeah she's fine and uh fine? <laughs> she is fine. fine uh but it, it's like bill bill i'm gonna echo him again and it's it's the least favorite of my uh sinbad movies 
le least favorite of all the Sinbad, even the ones that aren't hair housing. <laughs> oh well, 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 because there's some there's some shite out there. There's uh, a Lou Ferrigno there one. Yeah, there is a Lou Ferrigno yeah. one. I forgot about that. Jeff Morrisor, how you doing? I'm good. What was I'm your good. back in the first old home abode? Yeah. So wh when did you first watch this film, and what was your first impression, and does it hold up today? Uh, actually, I think like three or four days ago. Um, nah. I, it, uh, I, I'm going to go with you. I, I put it off for a long time because you all know my, I, I condemnation prior to investigation. I, I wasn't interested, interested in seeing anything that starred Patrick Wayne. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cause I had never seen him do anything that made me want to see more of his stuff. Uh, the, uh, but. I will say that to me that the reasons to watch this movie, and we may have some disagreements, but in general, the stop motion animation, the creatures, the uh, and Jane Seymour is uh, fun to look at, and Taryn Power. Um, interesting. I didn't realize that Tyrone had a daughter that was had done some acting, but oh, you can wow. definitely see the family resemblance mm -hmm. uh, in her face, facial structure. But anyway. You know, I, what can I say? I, I usually like uh, Patrick Troughton, but he's not particularly good in this either. I just think <laughs> they didn't have much to work with. Um, you still were trying to recover from the omen, I think. I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> could have been. Could have been. Uh, <laughs> it, he, his makeup yeah. looked great. I thought his look was great. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's, was, all. that's all I got like, to say. Yeah, Chad, he was auditioning for a movie that was like, you know, 30, 30 years too early, right? So. Yeah. All right. All right. Are you ready for this? <laughs> All right. You know me. I, I generally like films and an optimistic kind of happy guy. I hate this movie. This movie is shite. This movie is terrible. I dislike this movie. I was looking for I, I realized I hadn't seen it. I thought I had and realized I had. And I was like, what, what is going on here? It feels like I watched this movie because it's very similar to the last one. But it's not. It's 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 miscast. It's horribly miscast from top to bottom. The monsters are uh, not. I mean, they're they're okay. So they're animated fine, but they're very bad choices. Hmm. Except maybe the troglodyte. Yeah. But the but I didn't, now uh, some people like to say Bertuse, but I thought it looked like a stuffed animal. Build a bear. It, yeah, it <laughs> like a build a bear. Oh my god, that's right. It did. <laughs> It, it just didn't. And there was this like this shot they used a couple times where it was like, Ooh. and I, I just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's horribly acted. It's horribly directed. It's horribly edited. The special effects outside of the stop motion are awful. And the dialogue is even worse. The length, the length of it is, oh my God. I, Every second of this movie was like torture. It twisted my eyeballs into like little, uh, like, uh, uh, and I was like, uh, and I did not like this one. I, I think this is the movie I've disliked the most out of all the 70 movies we've watched. Wow. What? Even the bad That's... ones that we've watched. I think I would rather, I'd rather endure those again. Fury of the Wolfman? Fury of the Wolfman one I, more time. I will, I'll watch, was it Milligan? I'll go watch what? his films. Really. Andy Mellon. Oh, it, oh I'll bold statement. I'll go watch okay. his films instead of this one. Oh, you just watch. Now you've. Now I'll, you've wa I'll watch. I'll watch Dracula versus Frankenstein for twenty four hours straight, rather than watch this piece of shite again. Oh no, I don't believe that for a nah, second. Nah, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't do that to myself, but I would do nah. at least three of them before I give up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Jane Seymour. I mean, it's fine to look at, but how did she get an acting gig after this? She was terrible. She was just like, I'm Jane Seymour, and I'm going to walk around in a scampy outfit. I, I scan, I was, and no. And, uh, He's doing know. it, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to stand his ground. I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to like. I think this movie gonna broke have a, him. I'm going to, yeah, I did. I'm going to have a movie that broke Doc. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're into it. And I'm just going to say right off the bat before we get into it, there's a scene where. The little teeny version of the witch. They keep yeah. calling her a witch, and she's just like an ugly woman. Oh, sorry. Um, that was cruel. Not, not, not wrong, but Accurate. it's cruel. But true. Uh, 
does her little eyeball thing to, at this point, giant-sized Patrick Troughton and puts him to sleep, I went right out with him. Ah, so it worked. I went, I went, I went, She's hey, good at her job. I was going to say, this is working. <laughs> oh, crap. I woke up 3 a.m. Guess I'm going to have to watch the rest of that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's pretty much my experience with the rest of the movie. Wow. Bill, why do you, I mean, defend yourself. Why, what am I what? missing? Why, why are the, why, L- what's going listen, on here? I'm the guy why? who thought Planet of the Dinosaurs was perfectly fine. I, I am a slave to stop motion. If it's got stop motion, especially if it's got Ray Harryhausen stop motion, I'm there. Yeah, the script sucks. Look, this is one of those movies where the plot utterly depends on people being morons. So, like, they got a secret mission to to rescue the baboon prince, and it all depends on <laughs> getting to this guy. Why? Okay, getting to this guy. And what does what We're does Seymour do? She's like, you know, just can't take it anymore. It's like, huh? I'm gonna wipe that smirk off your face. We're going to this island to go get this guy who's gonna foil your plans. And you can see the evil witch is like, hmm. Well, and thanks the for guy, this falling the guy in my does lap. The same thing. He does and the same then thing. the wise man, the smartest man on earth, he's like, ah, so you snuck into the boat. You probably wanted to see this map here. Take a good look at it. Take oh a God. look. Remember, look, you see what about where the X is? That's where we're going. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, so the only smart person in this movie is the witch. But then at the end, she does the dumbest thing. It's like tells her son who she clearly loves. She dotes on this boy. It's like, Go kill that monkey that's defended by six guys with swords. And he goes running there with like a switchblade and dies. Like, oh, of course he was going to die. There was no chance this was going to work. What? And she's devastated. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, everyone's kind of an idiot. Everyone's an idiot. I don't know who wrote this script. Trog, I think, wrote this script. And he, you know what? He did the best he could, but he didn't speak English. Trog, Um, well, he, he he spoke baboon. He spoke baboon as as and vice and, versa, as we and he certainly yeah. liked the ladies. He was a ladies troglodyte. That's for he, sure. Yeah, yeah. You can't blame him there. Hey, no, okay, he, okay. You know who's <laughs> the ladies? The baboon. The baboon meets Tyrone Powers' guy, daughter, and she falls for him. I mean, talk about game. It's yeah. Wow, good guy. Then, <laughs> Remember when I was a baboon? Yes, dear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then there's <laughs> then, then there's Chekhov's key. Which just gets thrown off into the. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, this is useless. Yeah. She... Oh God, I hate this movie. <laughs> there are there are a lot of things that they're setting up for something that's like, oh, this is going to be great. Like the Minuton was kind of cool, and then he gets taken out <laughs> in the worst way possible. You're like, wait a minute, oh. what? Did... He just oh, oh oh didn't see that coming. Oh, curse uh-huh. your gravity. I think he. I think I heard that when he fell off the thing with the. Oh, maybe you need to have a clockwork <laughs> brain to put into his head. I don't know. Oh and then and then, the, then all the ice looks like like silo like like silicone like cellophane yeah. Yeah. Uh, cellophane wrapping all over the place. Like, yeah, what well, the hell is going on? Weapons. Uh, but Jeff's over there going, no, I love this movie. What, tell me what's going on. What's wrong? What's wrong? What am I? Am I? Am I being too harsh? Jeff? No, no. I, 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 well, you're, Doc, you're you. It's, it's, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I wouldn't think. I wouldn't even try to change you. Uh, I. Uh, you can't I, question. It, it was the same thing for me. I. I enjoyed the stop motion animation. To me, all the stuff you're talking about are the things around the edges of the stop motion animation. You know, was it cellophane or was it? You know the snow, which I can't even imagine uh, how you would melt snow. But uh, anyway, um, I enjoyed the animation, and I yeah. enjoyed looking at Jane Seymour. And I'm sticking with that. That's yeah. it. She it's is so long. dang young it's in this. Movie. Too long. I know. Yeah. So, and it's so the plot is boring. It makes so no green. sense. I'm totally with you guys on all that. I just uh, she looks like there's. Not to sound too pervy. Uh, I'm not going to say it because uh, it will late. sound too pervy. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but there's some shot. I think she was like 24 when they made this movie. Um, and there's some shots where I swear she looks like she's, it's like yeah. a high school picture or something. Mm. You know, like. You're definitely young. Definitely young. Yeah. Definitely yeah. young. Yeah. Um, ah, this movie just frustrated me every second of the way. It was just. All right. Well, we got to get past that. Um, all right. So John Philip Law was supposed to reprise the role 
Yeah. And for some reason, helped. some reason didn't, and we got Patrick Wayne. Does any? Do we know why John Philip Law couldn't do it? I, you I know, know. It, that seems to be a bit of a mystery that it, it isn't really addressed. And and I think Law says he was willing to do it, but they didn't call him. And they didn't call him. That's yeah. So. And I don't know why they would have thought. I mean, I thought he did a great job. I thought he was the best of the Sinbads. His accent was kind of came and went, but at least he tried. Mm-hmm. And and you know he was he was great in it. I thought, but what they okay. So apparently there were a couple of weird choices, as you say. One is that they deliberately avoided doing the mythological creatures for this one in mm-hmm. favor of more realistic or real Same creatures. World. Yeah, and and the problem with that is mythological creatures are really really cool, and walruses are not. Uh, even a giant walrus, I, the, Harryhausen did the best he could. Walruses are really limited in what they can do. They they have no personality whatsoever. That when we get to the sketches, there's yeah the walrus. Shows well, that was a mystery. That was a mystery, that, and that was supposed uh, to be a yeti. They were going to do a yeti, yeah. which is why did way they do cool. a yeti? And yeah. I think the reason is but, that they said the Yeti would be too much like the Trog. Yeah, uh, I'm going to take a, a step back to Patrick Wayne and what happened to uh, John Philip Law. I still don't know about John Philip Law, but here's a quote from Schneer. Oh, the producer who picked this after, guy. After casting, yeah, and one of Harryhausen's big supporters, right? Uh, yeah, Schneer oh, said, absolutely. I thought we would have some chemistry with John Wayne's son, <laughs> Tyrone Powers' daughter. I think he means marketing. Uh, but yeah. So I put them together. Yeah. Pat did the best he could, but frankly, he was only adequate. We had him grow a beard, and he looked fine. But as soon as he opened his mouth, we were in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. I like to oh, say great. that again. Just, just love it when the producer says I, that. But how when does that he, happen? He cast them, right? You, you know, you, you give the person the script, and they read it. I've been to these, you know, auditions, they're called. And you read the script and you see how they sound. Did they like, oh, that wasn't that good. But you know what? I think with a beard, it'll sound better. <laughs> what? I, uh, no. And then he's wearing a disco shirt. More colorful that, they than seem what to I've get, uh, They seem to get rid of it. But in the first shot, it seemed to me like he was really majorly uh, painted, you know, mm. to, to look like he had darker skin. Then later on, it didn't seem like they paid much attention to that. Yeah. Uh, I because yeah, when I, I saw that first shot, I went, "Oh man, they're not going." The, the thing he does not have any sense of leadership charisma. This is not a guy that a bunch of burly, hardened sailors would follow to the ends of the world. Mm-hmm. John Philip Law is like he's he's got that alpha male look to him. That's like, yeah, it's like these guys know that Sinbad's taking them to a place where they're probably going to get killed horribly by monsters. But he always gets through, and if I stand near him, maybe I'll be okay. And you know, he's got that quality to him i wouldn't follow this guy into a 7-eleven and think i, was no I feel way. like the duke I gave know, somebody a phone call at the studio and hey yeah. pilgrim i heard well, you're doing one of those sin bad films my well, son's why did you cast that? my son he's a good looking feller yeah that's my job good looking feller now we mentioned the min- the I keep wanting to call it the Minotaur, but it's actually a Minotaur because it's a mechanical Minotaur, which was right. actually had some practical effects to it. Yes, yeah, it did. yeah. Um, and there's at, at some points of the film, there's a person in that. There in, is. In, in, do we have do, do we have that slide available? Oh, do we? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah yes. do. We got lots of slides. And, you, oh yeah. Yes, and what's fun about it is it was played by Chewbacca. Yeah, yes. the actual uh, character of Chewbacca was inside there. It was very sweaty because you know the hair and the heat and uh, but Peter Mayhew, look at that guy. Look at the mm-hmm. size of that man. Mm-hmm. And I think this was his first film that they they uh, Schneer saw him on a British TV show because you know, he was like I don't know he worked as a school nurse or something and they're like look at the size of this school the world's biggest school nurse. He's like, ah, we can use him, and the rest is history. Yep, and then of course we got Chewbacca right after it. So, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, history but you know, it, the Minotaur's a cool creation. But here's again the problem with this movie is that almost all of these creatures remind you of earlier, better Harryhausen films. This one reminds me of Talos. Um. The, the ghouls remind me of the skeletons and a little bit of the creatures in First Men in the Moon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, the 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 
Trog versus the saber tooth tiger is kind of like the Cyclops versus the the Griffin. Although I think it's actually a better uh, choreographed fight. And then there's some choices that are just baffling. Uh, there's nothing scary about a giant wasp. I mean, in real life, it would be terrifying. If I'm driving my car and there's a wasp in my car, I just immediately get my hands off the steering wheel and start waving around like a ninja uh, and crash into a telephone pole. But they're not exactly exciting creatures. I like the ghouls. I like these yeah, ghouls. Look I at them. Too. And I, I will say that the, probably the, the baboon is the one that is actually... I mean, it's it's not the creature we want to see animated, yeah. but it's probably the best animated creature. I mean, it, it is. It's, there's some it really shows, remarkable stuff he does with it. I think I the Babu and Trog, it shows Harryhausen's ability to actually make these little puppets have personality. I felt terrible when Trog died. Mm-hmm. I was I really too. upset. He didn't deserve that. He's a mm-hmm. heroic creature. He's, you know, and, and that fight is a good fight. It's so much better than the Cyclops versus the uh, Griffin. I mean, uh, you know, they're fighting, there's blood, this thing is tearing into them. And I disagree. I kind of like the the saber-toothed tiger is very bulky, like muscular, which, you know, kind of works and everything. Yeah, the, the face, the problem with, a, with a, doing a cat is we've all seen cats. I see them all the time. So, you know, if it's if it's off a little bit, but you got to give them credit. I mean, man, in this movie, the the problem was animating hair has always been a problem for stop motion. Mm-hmm. And here he picks the baboon and a saber tooth tiger. I, I yeah. yeah. And and I don't think either one of them fail because of that choice. I think it I think it just made the tiger too plump. I mean I know it's supposed mm-hmm. to be muscle, but I think I think Chad had it right. It looked like a what do you Build-a-bear. call build a bear build a build a build a tiger. Yeah. It was like uh oh. he's plushy. He is a little too plushy, but I mean, it's also aimed at kids, so I guess it's not a bad choice. But, but this, yeah, the design for this was a lot of fun. Of course, he uses the horn too during the battle. Yeah, um, yeah, and I, I include that picture on the bottom because, unfortunately, and this is something Harryhausen had to do uh, to save money. They cannibalized Trog to make the uh, Calabos monster mm-hmm. for Clash. Of the ah, Titans. okay, that makes sense. Yeah, which I, you know, I wish. Um, I, I wish but, all of his models had, you know, were able, but that happened a lot. The, the Emer from 20 million miles to earth was turned into the Cyclops and, you know, you, it's very expensive to make these things. So you do what you can, but I love Trog. I thought Trog was great. Yeah. He was, he was my favorite, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I, I wouldn't be surprised if the ghouls were re, redone from the things from, from the skeletons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, and, and, you know, this is probably, the trickiest this is you know every Harryhausen movie has that one sequence where it's like oh wow you know like the the Kali statue or something when you think about it this has really got some cool lighting effects where mm-hmm. the flames are you know you've got to animate the light you've got to animate the flickering light to make it look like that there's flame reflecting yeah. off of these puppets that is not easy and then he's he's swinging it. So oh, you've got to animate the, the, you know, you've got to figure out how you're going to get this flaming torch with real flame, because nothing looks faker than fake flame, on this animated creature. These are the sort of little things that Harryhausen would do that are almost unnecessarily difficult, but they make you appreciate, you know, this is why it took him a year and a half, two years to finish this movie. And it's why they don't make movies like this. And we'll never have anything like that again, because Hollywood cannot deal with with something where, and now we're going to spend the next two years where one guy is going to be doing all the effects. That's too long. What happens if something happens to him? Oh, well, you're screwed. I wouldn't. Oh, my God. You're right. You're but, but, you know, but the, the thing is, a Harryhausen movie, good, bad, indifferent, it's all one vision. When you go to see a Marvel movie, and I love Marvel movies. I'm not picking on them. But you can tell, like, boy, that sequence was was done by the best FX crew and this one, uh, okay, maybe they're not the best. There's no coherence. It, it just it, everyone you're given a scene. This person's given a scene. Hopefully, there's some someone who communicates that and things don't look different. But it's it's pretty. But you don't get a sense of an individual vision. Mm-hmm. That's that's not that's that's true. That's I was gonna say that's not incorrect, but that's a double negative. But that's true. Uh, <laughs> well, Jeff, I'll take either. Jeff, before we get into all the cast, uh, should we do taglines? Oh, we yes. should. Because right. it's still always doing time it? for yep. taglines. 
with Chad. Oh, it's the best. I lost my notes. What notes? What notes? <laughs> hey, Chad, have you had some coffee? Because I think these are the kind of taglines that really need some a jolt of caffeine. Yes, yes, do it. Okay. All right. I don't know what Jeff's laughing at, but it's making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The first tagline for Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger is No! Sinbad's boldest, most daring adventure! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the second one goes kind of the Sinbad! The greatest of all adventurers! Well, that was Edith. That completely oh different. Oh my god, it was. Goddamn. <laughs> my voice is going to be different if I keep going. Ah. Like All right. The third tagline is Sinbad's biggest motion picture adventure yet. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> it's not bad, but that's not a very good Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, it sort of morphed into him at the end. Yeah. I didn't start. Oh, okay. I just, yeah. We're free flowing here. It's whatever comes out of my mouth. The fourth tagline is Sinbad, the greatest of all adventurers and the, his biggest adventure of all. Oh, wow. So we have, I, I, I love this. We have the bold and most daring adventure, the greatest of all adventurers, the biggest motion picture adventure, the greatest of all adventures in his biggest adventure. Getting the adventure there. Beat the hell out of superlatives and adventure, right? This oh, week's just taglines said... were brought to you by Melanthius. Do you have <laughs> acid indigestion? Do you have heartburn pain? Try Melanthius. Now back to our program. All right. Well, with that should have gone news, with. Oh, should have gone with. Hey, you want to see? Want to see partial nudity in a G-rated movie? We got it here. Yeah. 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 Oh, it should be Sam Kinison. Like, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sinbad's biggest, most daring adventure. That would be too much. All right, um, Sinbad. I love that poster. poster. That is a it's great, a great poster. poster. Yeah, it is. And it, is. It, it, it is. and it throws the most ridiculous plot element right into the title. Um, <laughs> oh, that, I, I love it though. I love it. I, I, love, well, I, I love it in the poster. Oh, but, I liked it in uh, reality. I, did I you really? It. Oh, yeah. oh, no, it's not enough. And you look down and it's like this. <laughs> I didn't say it was good acting. I just thought. Yeah. Well, she still gets a lot of rides when she does that on the highway. Ooh. She's trip, trip, trip. Fur, furries? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, uh, she's, when she's hitchhiking, she gets the most rides still. Hey, I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, on this poster, on the left side, right above... <laughs> Right above Sinbad's head, is that is that a rabbit or something or a goat or what is that supposed to be? It, it's a goat. Thing? It's a goat. Oh, was that in oh, the movie and I missed it? There's a snake. Was there a snake? No. There's a walrus. There was a walrus. There's a, there there was a walrus. There was no snake. Yeah. And a mm -hmm. seagull. No, they didn't even try to make that Sinbad look like Patrick Wayne, did they? Well, would you? <laughs> <laughs> He's a handsome guy. I guess. <laughs> That's okay. They might not have known right. he was going to be in All it right. Time. Well, why, why don't we just start right? Well, do we want to start with Sam uh, Wanamaker? Because we need There's to not much to say. Um, he did direct 23 things, most of it TV. Mm. Um, why did the, why was this so bad? Charles was Schneer it? thought that he, because he had worked with him on, on a movie called The... I can't remember, um, but he worked on him with a movie uh, that he, I guess he was happy with. And he said, he's a, he's a actor's director. And mm. they all recognize that one of the flaws, if you will, in Harry House's movies is that the animated puppets were way more interesting than the humans. So I think he thought that bringing in a director, you know, at this point, Harry Housen directs the animation stuff. That's all taken care of. We don't really right. need an action director because all the action is going to be done by Ray Harryhausen. But we need someone in those in-between moments when you know we're trying to keep the audience from falling asleep, apparently unsuccessfully with Doc's case, uh, with these human characters. So he got an he got a director that he thought could do it, and it just didn't work. This is this movie's a lot of people walking from one place to another. So I I find this real interesting. Bill, the, the guy that mm -hmm. saved. 
the new Shakespeare Theater in Liverpool. Yep. It was born in Chicago, Illinois. And I got to say this just because, just so people know that things happen in Iowa besides stupid government. Um, he went to Drake University, which is a private college in uh, Des Moines. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's move there, on. There aren't a lot of them, but I, I got to point out the Iowa connection. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. When he you also can. played David Warfield in Superman Four: The Quest for hmm. Peace. Hmm. He was an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he wow. Was. Oh, that was a bad. Oh, movie. Spiral Staircase too. But that was in 1975. What the hell? Yeah, I think that was remade a number of times. It's probably not mm -hmm. the one you love. He, uh, he, well, he was Teddy Teddy Benjamin and Private Benjamin. Was he the dad? Okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, let's move on to Patrick Wayne. Uh, um, I mean, he looks good there. He looks good. Does but, he though? Yeah, he looks <laughs> fine. And and I mean, you know, but what. It just reminds me of like when I'm listening to some pro wrestling podcasts and they'll be talking about some guy who never really made it. Like he had all, he looked good. He had a, you know, about, he was good on the stick. He could do good interviews and everything. And then the bell rang and, and he's awful. And that's what this is like. As soon as he opens his mouth, he just, <laughs> it was about, uh, he looks better in the turban than not that he was given. I mean, no one was given great dialogue. Nobody was given really a lot to work with. But yeah, yeah. Now, of course, he's he's I guess mostly famous for being John Wayne's son, right? Yeah. Did he, what, yeah, he said. Uh, I saw a quote of his where he said, I, I, "I'm probably just relegated to being just a personality, but that's okay with me." Yeah, yeah that's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, now he'd be part of the whole Nepo baby uh, imbroglio. You know, the, the people are upset that some of these actors got there because their parents were famous. And it's like, yeah, that that's the least surprising thing in the world. Why not? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he did do genre stuff in the seventies. He did the people that time forgot. You mentioned that before yeah. the show, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which now, you know, we're going to, have to put that on our, our list so we can bitch about it. Oh boy. Again. And yeah. beyond Atlantis, maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Three episodes of fantasy Island. Yeah, a couple episodes of uh, The Love Boat, like everybody else. I've yeah. seen them before. And uh, apparently he was a captain on All My Children. I guess you got to do it if you got to do it, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I actually think uh, they did him a favor. The beard actually helps his face. He was a handsome guy, but there's just <laughs> nothing. But the beard, no, that's a good that's a good look. Yeah, because it know. hides most of it. Uh, well, yeah. But it before... <laughs> You know, like late sixties, it was mostly, and he had parts in his dad's movies. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Big Jake, McClintock. I think he's in the um, Searchers. Was he in the Searchers? Donovan's yeah, Reef, the Comancheros, the Alamo. Anyway, the mm -hmm. Searchers. Was he in yeah. the? Yep. Oh, oh, you know what? Listen, if you if you even have a bit part in the Searchers, you can put that on your gravestone. That's one of the greatest movies ever. Mr. Made. Roberts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's, that's a cool resume. I don't know might if this is. Off. Yeah, I was gonna say you might leave some bad off. I mean, when you, when you, like you said, a picture of him looks great. It just he's he doesn't. There's no chemistry with the other actors, any of them, yeah. male, female, or animal. Um, and hey, I mean, yes, it's just like what the it's hell? It's just pl it's plain. It's just yeah. There's no zap zap to it or. Mm -mm. And so, look, look, you got to got to give people a little bit of credit here. If you're in a Ray Harryhausen movie, your your whole thing is you're acting in front of a you know a green screen or something and pretending to be fighting something that you can't see. You have no idea what it looks. You know, it's it's probably difficult. I but then you're next to Jane Seymour. See. Yeah, I knew they couldn't see because when he went up to stab the tiger, he stabbed it right in the ass instead of going for a killing shot. <laughs> Wow. You know, okay, yeah. speaking of Me. that, I there's one shot where he goes and takes the sword at the end and jabs it into it. And, yeah. and the tiger goes, uh. yeah. <laughs> like its battery was going. Bizarre. Oh my god, yeah. exactly. I thought I was gonna <laughs> he sprayed it with bug spray first. My pants just... that was hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, it was the it was the craziest move. Well, here's uh, something we can all agree on. James, James Seymour is gorgeous. 
and and she starts off with the braided hair it looked great and then mm -hmm. it was like crimped and then it straightened out she's almost so young here she doesn't look like uh, jane seymour she doesn't no. she doesn't she's like jane seymour's daughter Mm -hmm. um but you know we could say that's another bond girl in you know, yeah 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 caroline morose in the previous one now i i love i like jane seymour a lot in this movie but if this movie had john philip law and carolyn monroe uh it gets it instantly gets another star everything everything else would still be the same but an extra star which in doc's case would bring it up to one star <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. I'm trying to find she's got so many weird credits. I'm trying to find stuff on her, but she's got like so many yeah, she, she, was, she, she, she did a lot of different things. It was kind of amazing. Well, uh it, I always get these titles screwed up, but isn't she in somewhere in time? Yeah. Yeah. The, the one with, the, the one Christopher, with Reeves. Uh, Christopher Reeves. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Better there. Uh she was in um she was in one of Frank, the uh... Frankenstein, the true story. Then she, oh, her, yeah, she was she great. She gets her head locked yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, she yeah. was terrific in that. I don't know what happened between that and this playing Farah. Um, yeah, Bow she was Star in one of those Dunstan. late night or evening programming, uh, like oh, Dallas. Right. One of those was it Falcon's mm -hmm. Crest or one of. She was on one of those uh, nightly What's, soaps. Bond girl in 73. Yeah. And then, of course, she's Dr. Quinn. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman for yeah. what? A hundred seasons. Yeah. Yeah, it's hundred seasons. Solitaire. It, it, and it was let, I, that's like six, six, five, five seasons. Five seasons. Wow, it seemed like forever. My it wife seemed like forever. All of yeah. And then she did TV movies with Dr. Quinn, medicine woman after that. She'd be like, I would watch that show with my wife and I'm grumbling. It's like, this is incredibly scientifically inaccurate. And she's like, shut up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she's, you know, I'm, I give her shit about her acting in this movie because it's awful, but she is, <laughs> she redeems herself throughout mm -hmm. her career off yeah. of this movie. This movie yeah. is not her, her finest example. Um, yeah. Well, but it's she's, interesting because. She was decent in Frankenstein, the true story, and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. she was that much uh, four years younger. Yeah, I just don't think she was interested in this. Yeah, I don't think it everybody also, seemed disinterested, except for the script. Except for the script Patrick is Cotton. terrible. The script is terrible for her. Like I said, she has the single stupidest thing in the whole movie, where she just blows the whole their whole secret plot out of there, and you know, like she did emote <sighs> a lot, and she emoted. <laughs> emoted with her face she so she was uh trying to add a little something to that to the to that dialogue it seemed to me because she's yeah. a princess at no point did i really feel like she was a she seemed more like the the slave girl that that carolyn monroe played you, you know, know you're it, right she did you know yeah. just uh, except for the beginning uh, when she had you know the, the sure movie. sure uh but she did she did scream and run away and leave uh the other girl there to be attacked by the Eaten yeah. by Trog, yeah. By yeah. the Trog who kept and she kept sliding on the rocks. The well, that's there. when she suddenly remembered she's a princess. Wait, I'm too I'm too important to get eaten. I gotta, I so gotta go. she's the princess, <laughs> and she's supposed to marry Sinbad. Uh, no, I thought she was supposed to marry the uh, the guy that got turned into the baboon. That's her oh, brother. God, that was her brother. brother. Oh, that was her brother. Good God, her brother. Jeff. That might be true, but that's her brother. Hey, Jeff, this is this is Baghdad, not West Virginia. It was G. It was oh, G-rated. Sinbad and the bad, bad touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, guess. at the end, it almost seemed like Sinbad was... Okay, so her Sinbad. brother was supposed to be yeah. with uh, Taryn Powers. Character, yes. Right? yes. Sure. It was a little she's mixed into up. into furries. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. She's into furries. Okay. All right. Let's, let's speaking uh, of Taryn Power. Oh wait, no. We can we can do that. Do we have pictures? Of, we don't. We do got Taryn. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we do. Where? Do we? Do we? Do we? Taryn. Do we? Where's it at? I don't see it. Uh, it's right above it. there. To, right above Zenobia. Uh, I don't see it. There she is. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Why don't I see it? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But there you go. I I liked her. I I thought she just had a nat. I, I mean. It's hard to say if she's a good actress or a bad actress because her characters, you know, they're all underwritten. But she just had a natural quality that I found very appealing. Yeah. 
She yeah, kind of had this her. innocence to her and had a good look. But man, were they a shit to that baboon. They, when that baboon was trying to tell them something and they were like, just yeah. being a shit to him. <laughs> Give him a Don't break. A the guy got turned into a baboon. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, really, you know, is he's allowed to have a bad day. He's he's a little grumpy today. He's like, he's been turned to a freaking baboon. And my lanta right there, he kept he kept saying my lanta. My he's lanta. a He's getting too ferocious, and the monkey's over there just going, uh oh. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's turning into a carnivore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, he's eating his nails. Look at him. But then, Next, it'll be me. Go ahead, Chad. No, go yeah. ahead. You've ruined right, my whole Right after skateboard. he warns him that he's going to turn into a carnivore, then he does something. He treats him like he's a person again, like, or, or does something that would be dangerous. I can't remember what it was, but I remember thinking, well, that didn't last very long. No, yeah. No, no. All right. Would have been great at the end when he turned into the handsome prince if he was like still grooming her for nits or something, you know, just <laughs> acting like a baboon. If Mel Brooks directed it, yeah. All right. All right Zenobia. All right. The one person in this movie is having fun, this actress. Is, is she? Oh, yeah. Ah, she's okay. chewing up the scenery like crazy. Look at that smirk. Look at that smirky face there. That's the face of every Karen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, She's Karen about Obia. to talk to the caliph about you, Buster. Caliph. She dresses in purple. So could she? Up. Could she be more evil? What's going on, Not by much. Jeff? I'm just trying to figure out. Is that is that uh, Kurt Christian? Yes, that is Kurt Christian up yeah. at the top. Who, who doesn't what, have the... like three lines? He just kind yeah. of glares at everything for a little yeah. bit. And isn't isn't it weird that they hired him? I mean, I guess I guess they must have really enjoyed having him on the set for Golden Voyage because they hired him to play a completely different character with completely different motivations and we're not supposed to notice hey he was the he was the comedy relief from the last movie or they saw him in Horror Hospital mm. oh that's right that's right <laughs> but why didn't they give me dialogue he, he doesn't have any lines and he just uh, oh, he's got one bit it's like you said I would be the Caliph I'm like shut up you know you're doing your mom's do <laughs> listen your mom may be evil but she has turned a prince into a baboon. She's made a giant bronze statue and a heart to go with it. She's you know, flopping around with it. a big seagull foot trying to help you out. Shut up. Damn. Seagull foot. Ungrateful wench. Seagull foot. Yeah. All right. Now here, here goes Gandalf himself. Yep. You <laughs> shall not pass. If you squint just a little bit. Oh, you don't even have to squint. What are you talking about? It just looks like Gandalf. <laughs> 30 years too soon. Um, and there he is as Doctor Who. Okay. Yeah, he's Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Now, of course, I, I remember him from The Omen. That's where I remember. because you know, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, but he, and the bottom know. one is? Jason and the Argonauts. He was the blind oh, man who was tormented oh, wow. by the harpies. Yeah. So I guess they, they were like, hey, we worked with this guy before. And, you know, now we don't even have to put any old age makeup on him. He's old age now. <laughs> well, I would say that he... I, of all the people, you said that the other one was having fun. He's the only one I would have said has having fun. He is, he's definitely chewing the scenery. He's just yeah. being. Him and user. Zenobia are. are... Yeah. I, I should have just started... had a move with those two. Yeah, yeah. Although I, I still don't. I mean, I guess, I guess her whole motivation. Sorry to change subjects real quick, but her whole motivation was to. Do away with the prince so her son could become yeah the whatever he was the prince was becoming right and um, instead of instead of putting a curse on him that kills him she turns him into a baboon and they had something in there is like if you spill royal blood it will create a curse on the lands like okay so that explains why she did this incredible batman villain thing of turning him into a baboon instead of just like you know his head falls off um I don't know. I would have done something. If I were writing this script, there was a lot of things I would have done differently. But one of the things I would have done is have a relationship between Gandalf here and Zenobia that goes way back. Now, maybe they had an mm. ugly breakup, or, but something personal. Let's get some go. personal stakes in this. It's, yeah. yeah we're just Sinbad is our son. To... Sinbad, oh, I am God. your father. Oh, <laughs> Oh, but he was great. I okay. Uh, uh, you know, I shit yeah. on this movie, but he was fine. But I could not. 
I, it just was Gandalf to me. Well, I mean, that's a classic uh -huh. trope. The old guy, he's the old guy who knows things, even though the things he knows, he doesn't really know. I mean, why are they going to this place? Because this ancient culture had a weird power source. Maybe it'll cure the prince. Maybe. I don't know why there's any reason to think that it's going to turn a monkey back into a guy. But you know what? These ancient people had all kinds of powers. Maybe this was one of them. Worth a shot, right? Well, Worth a shot. Yeah. Let's see what happens when this bee out here in the middle of the ocean that happens oh. to be on our boat will <laughs> licks up just and, a little oh, bit yeah. of this tiny okay. little juice. No, no, yeah. Yet. So the whole thing is, I don't know if I have enough of this to cure the prince. Let me waste a little more by turning a hornet into a monster. And don't yeah, kill it when you're seeing it he's, grow. He's the smartest don't, guy don't on the it. ship. This is the smartest man maybe in the he, whole world. That's his he, plan. He did have it right. the scaredest one from that bottom picture. He said, oh, kill yeah. the seagull before you kill the... <laughs> <laughs> before he killed the bee, but he yeah. didn't do it. If he would, it would the movie would have ended right there and everything would have been, yeah. would have been fine. But no. All right. There you go. One I didn't do was the walrus because it has like special things on it. I am the that. walrus. Um, um, that's, that was here, his look, name, you, wasn't it? Cuckoo Kachu. Yeah, Cuckoo Kachu. If you look at the uh if you look at the storyboards, and I love Harry Harryhausen's storyboards. He was a really good artist. I the walrus it. actually <laughs> has a the walrus has got a personality there. You know, he he's actually got kind of a evil grinning face there and all, but misunderstood. But then, you know, yeah. But then when he made the walrus, it ended up looking like a real walrus, and they are not the most expressive of creatures. It's just he's just a big walrus. That's all he is. And yeah. and when they're hitting him with spears, I'm like, you know, he didn't really do anything wrong. He belongs here. You guys are showing up, and I don't know. It's, it's not. That's a, why I kill half the the guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not an exciting. I, 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 oh, when the one guy, they're all happy. We we killed it. They yeah. look over and one of their little guys is oh. like flattened on the snow. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh. Dear. <laughs> all right, let's go. The, the snow. <laughs> the Meanwhile, snow. it's snowing. <laughs> it's constantly snowing, and yet they never end up with any snow on them, as oh, no. if the snow was just an optical effect or something. Mm, maybe because it was now what's this you have a, this, a scene that this is a see? sequence that was originally going to be planned and then was abandoned where uh trog so that's an early version of trog without the horn was fighting and i can't i keep forgetting what this creature is called our our incentium it was like a primitive rhinoceros type and this this i don't know that any movie has ever had one of these but he was going to be in the original king kong i think mm. they even built a model for it and it was going to be Trog fighting him, and eventually uh, the creature gets stuck in a tar pit and sinks to his doom. But Trog doesn't, because Trog's smart like that. Yeah. It's interesting that in the La Brea tar pit, there's all—I mean, there's saber-toothed tigers, there's mammoths, there's giant vultures and hyenas. No humans, no humans, because humans were smart enough to like, yeah, that water is just sitting on a big pond of tar. I'm not going in there. Look at this mammoth. Watch, watch him. There he goes. Yeah, you dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they'd film this though. This looks like a cool sequence. And if a movie's got to be two damn hours long, let's have some more animation in there instead of more there walking around. And... It'd have been another two years. Yeah. So there's one thing that the film does that we haven't talked about and they don't do much with it, but it has a lot of promise. It's all the frozen people in their little tombs when they go through the cave, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because. Uh, the witchy poo, she can make it through the cave when Sinbad can't. And I was like, oh man, because she at one point she goes, by the power of all the dead. I was like, oh, they're gonna come to life. No, no, yeah. no, no, it would have been nope. just like the skeleton fight, only cool, yeah. Okay. But I icy, mean, yeah. ice people, icy that would have been cool. awesome. Icy cool. And there were the bunch I mean, and it looked awesome, but I do like it. the sets. I mean, they 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 use that set, that city built into the walls that they ended up using for Indiana Jones, too. Uh that oh, know, nice. So that's probably where some of the budget. This was a big budget for a Harryhausen movie. Three and a half million dollars doesn't sound like a lot for a big special effects movie, but it was the second biggest budget he ever worked with. And I think a lot of it was those sets. Unfortunately, apparently they didn't pay to actually take the actors with them to those sets. They just filmed them and then just had some of the worst process. Oh my, they were all seen. over the place, right? Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Oof. Well, Oof. you know, hey. All right. Well, we have, um, we're running a shy on time. It's all my fault, but we're going to uh, wrap this up and then get into some feedback because we got a lot of feedback. Uh, so how do we want to do this? I guess we're going to start with Bill Mulligan. Uh, 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 you chose this. <laughs> I, 
I'd give it a six out of ten, which is probably five oh, more wow. than that. Nice. That Doc's gonna give. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not top notch Harryhausen, and, and you know you're beginning to see you're beginning to see that things have got this now what used to be cutting edge special effects overnight in 1977 became old fashioned, and that's what all the reviews said. I remember reading the reviews; and it was kind of breaking my heart a little. Plus, some of the stupid reviews that were talking about things like. The Minotaur, the the giant, uh, you know, Minotaur walks very stiffly. He's a bronze statue, you moron. Of course, he walks stiffly, Jesus. You know, and then there were a few that actually thought that the train baboon was was the best part of the movie. It wasn't a train baboon; it was a doll. Ugh. But all that being said, no, this is not top notch Harryhausen. But you know what? Below average Harryhausen is still better than most average movies. For me, anyway, I'll you know always love it. But this one, the fast forward button is your friend. Just keep fast, fast forward. forward. You, oh, there's some Harry House. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, there's a there's a hand up there. All right, Chad, you go ahead and fill in the blanks here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give this one a two out of five. Oh, okay. Um, just for the, the just because it's Harry House, and it wouldn't have got that high if Harry House wasn't in here. Um, the, besides from the choice of, of creatures and everything, uh, we did, I enjoyed the fight with the tiger and, um, uh, uh, Trog at the end. Um, mm. I thought it was pretty, um, emotional. <laughs> you know, you felt bad for that, for that guy, for Trog, but, um, yeah, it's, um, it's derivative of a lot of other Sinbad movies, but, um, you know, if you love Harryhausen and you're a Harryhausen completist, then uh, give it a shot. And like Bill said, just use your fast forward button because <laughs> you've seen this movie before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead of Jeff because I just want to actually say the same thing as Chad because I was going to give it a two, too. And the only reason I give it a two is because of Harryhausen. Um, and the only reason you want to watch this is to see, uh, you know, the stop motion effects. It's really not much else worth it this movie it's uh and it's what's i mean it's only what like two or three years from the previous one right and yeah, that one is it's actually it. really good um yeah. but i i think you're right it's the choices they made but the creatures i think you know it's less fantasy and more yeah mm -hmm. uh but that's yeah i'll just shut up jeff <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you guys. Two sounds good out of five. The uh, <laughs> if I had to, you know, I'm going to say I'll just say it again. I like the stop. It's it's worth it to watch for the stop motion, yes, animation sequences, and it's Jane Seymour and Taryn Power both are nice to look at. That's another little nice little thing there because I don't know that I've ever seen anything she was in before. Taryn Power, um, so. That's that. All right. Well, check it out. Uh, I think I watched mine on Tubi, which was I itself. did as well. Also, often, often a challenge, just because of the way that platform is. But it, it's, but it's great because it's all these free movies. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'll take the pain to get the free movies. Uh, so check it out and let us know what you think about it down below. Uh, Jeff, we we have a few minutes. Do you want to go ahead and uh, give us some feedback? I'm trying to think of which ones to do here. I think I want to take uh, this first one first. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Make sure we get this yeah. in. Uh, from episode 176, Blue Sunshine, from Roy Jabib. Oh, that's funny. That's <laughs> I don't know the, that's if he's related spectrum. to Roy G. Biv or Yeah, uh, yeah. Because it's Blue Sunshine, maybe? I don't know. In the case of Blue Sunshine, there's a huge difference between licensing Frank Sinatra's rendition of a song and licensing the publishing rights with someone else singing it, which was the case here. Ditto with Barbra Streisand. So to presume it was just stolen or used illegally just shows your lack of understanding of the movie business. Ah, uh, won't be the last time. Mm -hmm. Coupled with that, rights to songs, even by the original artists, were dirt sheep when their movie was made and up until when movie was made and up until the 90s when artists and record companies got hip to what they could demand for their music, triggered by the explosion of home video, which required separate right agreements. Huh. So okay. never said I worked in the movie business. 
Yeah, I, 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 I guess can't, I, kinda... I can't be insulted by anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I kind of forgot that it was. It wasn't actually them singing, and yeah, well, and when you, you know, you know it, it, it makes sense. It may have been going for a laugh. I don't remember what that, yeah. the exact conversation was, but and we you do appreciate me, just the comment. Him. Yes, sure, I do appreciate the comment. Um, oh, yeah. hope you hope you listen to the other stuff. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to drop down to the end here yeah. because okay. this little conversation came up on Facebook today. Uh -uh. Oh, nice. Uh, our buddy Jerry Chandler put up a poster of The Man Who Haunted Himself, starring Roger Moore, which is listed as a drama mystery thriller. And our uh, frequent commenter, buddy, Mikey Z, said called it my favorite Roger Moore film, tops anything he did as 007, a very Serling-esque tale of identity loss. Have not seen this in almost 50 years. Saw it on a, on a midday weekend offering from a local New York City area station. It left a lasting impression on me. As I stated, I don't think more was better. Any place else, it's what he's saying. And I like his 70s Bond efforts. This is a film 70s group crew should take a look at and determine if it is DOH worthy. I know one of Jeff's great concerns is loss of self. This film definitely fills that ballot. <laughs> okay. There you go. I agree. Is it, and I'm going to watch streaming? it. <laughs> it's on Canopy, I noticed. I don't, I didn't. Uh. I think there was other, I can't remember if there was other ones or not. I do um, know this that, is the film that Roger Moore listed as his favorite. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I appreciate it. Jerry Chandler is always, uh, always fine. I have cool no doubt it'll be better than uh, the horror of Loch Ness or whatever it is. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And finally, next episode is Chad's pick. Chad, what do you got for us? Always a winner from Chad. Man, we're going to do John Carpenter's Dark Star mm. from 1974. Cool. Good pick. And it's uh, streaming on Tubi, Canopy, Crackle, Hoopla, Pluto TV, Plex, and Roku. Um, Roku. Awesome. Roku. All kinds of good oh, stuff. So. Yes, this is the balloon monster, right? The balloon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we do have some other feedback, but we'll save it. I'll transfer it over to the next episode. So. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, this was this was so much fun. I usually don't get this animated, Bill. <laughs> I love. I loved it. I loved it. Good to see Doc go off on something. Uh, yeah, boy. This is what Doc usually does on uh, Gruesome Magazine. I know. Every time I hate him, everyone else loves it, and I go off on it like oh, garbage. Yeah. My taste. No, I don't think any of us said we loved it. We just, you know, said it was. Well, and the gruesome you have. <laughs> oh well, uh, yeah, that has. Yeah, but that's yeah. a little that's more. My taste is, is quite questionable, but no, no. I, yeah, all right, but I still gave it the same as both Chad and Jeff. So, yeah. what do you, yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. think? So the, that's the difference between a a two and a two. <laughs> all right, guys, <laughs> Chad, Bill, Jeff, thank you for joining me. As always, this was a lot of fun. Yes, same Good to see you. Yes. Thank you. Can't wait to do a Dark Star next week. I, you yeah, know, be I haven't really seen that movie all the way through, so I'm excited about this. Oh, wow. I don't think I've seen it since college. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's say good night. Good night. Good night, guys. <laughs> <laughs>